Hello everybody, my name is Adrian Iliasiu and I'm an engineer with the DevNet team at Cisco. In this part of the course, I'd like to introduce my colleague uh, Vinay Prabhu from the Cisco SDN uh, team. He will give an introduction of how the WAN has evolved over the years from the WAN circuits of the past to the SD-WAN technologies of the present and future. So having said that, Vinay, um, take it over and I hope you guys enjoyed the, uh, the video. Hey guys, I'm Vinay. I lead the systems and security team with Viptela. What we cover as a team is the entire Viptela solution end-to-end uh, -end, along with features that uh, Viptela brings to the table, uh, stitching it to a Viptela SD-WAN cloud fabric uh, in a secure um, manner. What we are going to cover in today's uh, section is how Viptela came into being, what SD-WAN technology is, what the legacy technology was, and how it maps to the legacy technology, and how it's a uh, obvious leap for all the WAN uh, enterprises and operators to move towards SD-WAN. So without uh, talking too much about this, let's go on to the slides where we discuss the technology. And uh, we'll first start off with what was. So what was, was the router. Fundamentally, this is the building block of all uh, networks the core, the edges, what is, uh, what is deployed widely today. SD-WAN is not looking to replace the core, but leverage what the fundamentals that were used to build this uh, technology. So what does a router consist of? And this is across the table. This is not just Cisco. Uh, you, any r router, even the smallest one that resides in your home, has these three fundamental components, an I.O. module, an input-output module, a control plane, that's basically your CPU, and a switch fabric. And the switch fabric is essentially the interconnect between these two modules. So let's move on to what it does and how it does it. There are just two types of packets in the internet, OK? First is the routing packet, and second, the routed. So what is the distinction between a routing packet and a routed packet? A routing packet is essentially packet that, a packet that has information about uh, the routing table that has to be built on the router. The routed packet is the actual data that we overhaul over the internet to, from one end to the other, which leverages the routing table to actually move the payload from one end to the other. So how does this actually work on this closed system? What happens is there are physical ports on the I.O. modules. What these I.O. modules are, we also call them line cards, what we insert into the chassis. These physical ports actually connect into the internet. So there are two types of packets that are coming into the same physical port via the internet. The first packet that comes into this physical port is going to be a routing packet, for example. So a routing packet comes into this physical port. The I.O. module detects it to be a routing packet and punts it to the control plane module. So why does it punt it to the control plane module? What do you mean by the control plane? The control plane is anything that forms your routing table for you. That can be referenced by the I.O. module for actually uh, using to transmit the data from one end to the other at a later point. So the I.O. module detects the packet to be a routing packet, decides to punt it to the control plane module. Now, how does it transmit this packet to the control plane mo module? This is where the switch fabric comes into play. The switch fabric is essentially the back plane 
of this chassis, these are actual physical inter interconnects. Every time we insert a line card, you will see the I O module connecting to physical pins at the back plane of this chassis. Similarly, the control plane module is also connected to these physical pins that are all interlinked. So, what happens is this packet gets punted from this physical port into the I O module and through the switch fabric makes its way to the control plane module. What the control plane module does with this routing packet is grabs the information that is contained in it and uses it to create a routing table. or a routing information base. This routing information base is fundamentally all the routes that this router has ever learnt through this route, these routing packets. These will contain duplicates, these will contain routes that need to be poly, uh, 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 that need to be massaged to actually get a concise view of the routing table, which then the compressed routing table per se is called the forwarding in information base. It is just the same table, it is just a compressed view of this routing table. So, the forwarding information base has to go to your forwarding engine that is the I O module. So, this table then gets pushed back into the I O module via the same switch fabric. So, this is how the routing packet lives in this closed system. Let us go on to the second packet, the routed packet. This is the actual packet that uh, we use as co uh, consumers of the internet to pass payload from one end of the system to the other end. So, this packet makes it into this physical port of the I O module. The I O module now knows that, hey, this is a packet type B, a routed packet. I need to make a route lookup into this table that was programmed into me. So, the I O module does a route lookup into the FIB after having a route lookup into the FIB it decides hey this packet needs to be forwarded out onto this network. So, like if you look at the router itself each of these physical ports would fundamentally belong to a different network. So, what is happening is, hey I come in, I am a payload packet, a routed packet into through network X into physical port Y and I look up into the table that, hey this packet is destined for network Z, which is connected to some other port on the same I O module or a different I O module. I punt this packet out of that I O module onto a different network. So, that is fundamentally what uh, a routing module looks like, a router looks like. So, what does SD WAN do with this system? So, SD WAN is essentially just splitting this system open, the switch fabric system open. So, we will see that here. As you can see the split now, the edges are the I O modules, the controllers are the C P U or C P U module and now you may ask what the switch fabric is. So, the switch fabric is the internet itself. So, all we SD WAN has done is split what was wo working before as a closed system into a distributed open system, move the I O modules to the edges, move the control plane, the uh, CPU modules into the cloud and have a switch fabric interconnect which is the internet itself. Wh why was this possible? Because the internet is largely becoming more reliable, more lossless, uh, more predictable. So, the fundamental uh, property of a switch fabric 
is it should be lossless and it should be predictable. Why? Because it the control plane module and the I.O. module use this switch fabric to exchange routing information. Routing information, building the routing table is fundamental to route packets. If you want a reliable uh, building of this table, you need a switch fabric that is reliable. It, was this, uh, was, is this technology or is this uh, uh, method? Rocket science, no. But why it wasn't possible was a b before was basically the internet wasn't reliable or good enough to replace the switch fabric that exists in the closed system today. So you may ask what these edges are. These edges are the I.O. modules that reside in the branches today. Uh, it may be a data center, it may be an enterprise, it may be a store. All of these communicate with a common set of controllers that reside in the cloud over the internet. What, what does this fundamentally help in bringing on the table by splitting this this way? Imagine a network that consists of just routers, the traditional routers. Okay, so they have the I.O. They have the CPU and they have the switch fabric. This is router number one. Again, I.O. the switch fabric talking to the CPU and this could be router number N. Traditionally, you would have each of these routers residing in each of these edges. So if you have a 6,000 site network where you have stores located across the globe, each of those sites would have this piece residing in their network. So you could have 6,000 of these residing in different locations. What it means? Routing information has to be now programmed into 6,000 nodes to take effect. So ex for example, I have a network A, B, and C. Under steady state, what we are saying is any one of these can talk to the other directly. Under, under certain conditions, the network admin now wants to make sure that all packets from B are first sent to A and only then sent to C. This is a very basic change that the operator wants to achieve. What does it take for the operator to achieve this in the traditional network? He needs to update each of these routing tables individually. Why? Because each of these is a closed system by themselves. So what you essentially land up doing is going in, programming, this control component saying that, hey, expect a packet from B, perform an action, and then route it to C. You need to get into B. You log into B, tell B that, hey, you have no visibility of where C is, but if you have to route a packet, send it to A and let A take care of it. And then what you have to tell C is, hey, any packet that comes from A could also be a rerouted packet from B. So A is what you're going to see all the time. So imagine a three node network, the number of routing tables and CPU modules you have to touch for one simple policy change. How it maps in Viptela. You have a common CPU module that's controlling all these edge devices. So there is no CPU module residing in each of the edges. All I have to do today is go into the CPU module and program exactly what 
I said right here in a single CPU module. This automatically then reflects on each of these line cards that reside on the edge. So, with a single touch into the control plane, I can have a network wide uh, policy that has been implemented and modifying the routing table uh, through a single touch of the rib that resides in the cloud. So, that is the power that SD-WAN brings, that is the power of splitting the system open and having a co common control plane. So, uh, what else does the split of the system bring? The split of the system also brings in scale. Why does it bring in scale? Now, since your routing information base resides in a set of controllers in the cloud, these control plane modules can then just be spun up as and when the routing table starts to blow up into your network. So, you may start deploying a 100 node network. You can have two controllers sitting there that form the routing information base. With their compute power, with their memory, they should be good enough to handle a 100 node network. The customer decides to expand their network. All they have to do is spin up an additional controller, which takes the load of the two control existing controllers and your network routing table now can explode and we can laterally grow. Does this mean that this is a flawless technology? No. There are fundamental problems and these problems exist in any distributed uh, network or net, uh, distributed system. What are the problems? So, what is the, uh, the main criteria for splitting this uh, system? The criteria was that my switch fabric is lossless. Is this true? It is partially true. The internet of today is very reliable, but isn't lossless. So, we still have a problem of losing control data between the control plane and the edges. This is fundamentally why you still need closed system routers to form your backbone of the internet. Because you cannot have something that is lossy between the control and the edges. Are there ways to mitigate this problem? Certainly. Again, the, how are the control plane modules connected to each other? Because they have to be in sync. Again, this is via the internet. So, this is the other problem that any distributed system would hit. If you have a, a split brained control plane, since each of the control packets come into the control plane module, all these laterally growing control plane uh, systems need to have the same view of the network. So, the rib that exists on each of these systems should be identical. Since they are interconnected with the, through the internet, if this breaks down, your rib on control plane module 1 may dif be different from the rib on control plane module 2. This is the biggest, uh, or the biggest worry of any network admin, where you have two views of the same network. You, the routing packets will now, uh, the routed packets will now refer to one of these two tables if you land up in the split brain scenario. Again, are there ways to mitigate this? Yes, they are, and that's what we cover in how the architecture is uh, safeguarded against these split brains, against a lossy uh, control plane. 